It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Scent Vapor Hunting Scents, Killer Food Plot Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Antler Action, Family Tradition Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal Podcast, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin once again after three weeks with Dan DeFall. What's going on, Danny? How are you doing, sir? I'm... (laughs) It's been a long week, man. It's been a rough week for me. You know, you're right. It's been... You called me on Friday night. Mm Mm-hmm. I was in bed. Really? I was... When I called you, you were sleeping. I was... It was 9... Something fifteen I was, or something like. I was in bed. I was just coming home from work. Right, you were coming home, and, and it was it was just a, a long week. And it was Labor Day weekend last weekend. And, was it? But it shows how much tra- track of time I've lost. Oh. Hey, you know, before we get going tonight, um, a big shout out to uh, to everybody down in Texas and Florida uh, that's getting just the hell pounded out of them right now. Um, you know. It was Texas here a couple last week. Uh, we, we briefly mentioned it on one of the shows that we pre-recorded the week prior, I think. And then, uh, and then now, right now, as we speak, Florida's just getting. If you haven't pounded. seen the news today, yeah, you've been under a rock yeah. because it's all been about Irma, right on coming in. And then they haven't been really talking much about the second one that's back there, right? Yeah, there's no one coming in. There's another one. So, so. yeah, definitely a shout out, to, especially. To the people that got to stay, all the first responders that have to stay, that are mandatory, that they need to stay, and You're right, uh, they're going to help pick up the pieces when it all gets said and done. So, big shout out to them. It's uh, I got a, a friend I work with. His brother works at a TV station down in Tampa, and, and he was told, "You will stay." Oh, really? You will not evacuate, and he's uh, he's uh, twelve on, twelve off for the next eight days. Whew. So. Uh, looks like it's kind of calming down down there a little bit, but uh, you know, there's a lot of guys and gals down there in harm's way. And uh, for those of you who chose to write it out, you know, for whatever reason, I uh, just hope you guys are safe. You know, if anybody's listening to the show, happens to have their iPhone on and they're just trying to pass time, listen to the to the hurricane uh, or watching right. the live stream here, which I they're probably I, I, not doing, but if they are, you know, give us a quick I, shot. I, I I can't imagine sustained. 7,500 mile an hour winds, just no hours on end. I know what it's like when I'm sitting in a tree stand. And it's just rocking back and forth, and you're just like, man, is this ever going to quit? You know, right? And that and that's only 10, 15, 20 miles an hour, maybe? right? Right? Because anything more than that, we kind of get. I get like, all right, I'm not going to be in the tree. You're getting anymore. on the ground, <laughs> right? <laughs> just but, go back inside. Yeah, watching these news guys stand out there, and but yep, big shout out to all of them. So. Well, speaking of uh, weekends and weeks and doing everything, you had a pretty busy weekend last weekend. Yeah, got up north. Did you make it back across the bridge before they shut it down? <laughs> yes, I did. I tell you what, that was a, a smart plan because yeah. uh, along US two, along uh, when you're heading east or west, you get to a point where you get along Lake Michigan and right. it becomes a sandy beach. Right. That whole entire time, they put up two porta potties like every hundred yards. Mm-hmm. In anticipation of this bridge closing. Right. And that is several miles from the bridge. Right. So my thought was, I'm glad I'm getting under the bridge before Monday. Right on. But last Thursday, I took off out of here, loaded up, headed north, um, did good time, had great weather, um, was excited. The logging project is complete. I have the official um, binded uh, management plan Okay. that was sent to me. Uh, so I wanted to bring that and... You I, forgot it. Well, because I brought some other stuff. Yeah, you do. We got quite a few things here to talk about. Tonight, right, but. exactly. So, um, but I got up there um, in the evening, and, you know, got camp up and going, and it was actually a little cool. Yeah, I had to get a little fire going in the and get the get the cabin warmed up. Right on. Um, did that. Uh, so Friday morning, we uh, I had three food plots that I wanted to put in. That was my goal. Okay. So uh, I, I sent had, you up with some packages. You did. And uh, I started on the first first food plot, and basically this one was still barren dirt, Um, so I dragged it with the drag, and I ran over it with the call to packer eventually. Okay. Uh, As I was doing, as I I had Deb uh, using the four wheeler with the drag, just going around in circles and taking care of it. Okay. And I was kind of walking and trying to get the big rocks out of it. I'm not going to get them all. Right. But I got a plan for that next year when I have the. uh, 
the uh, landscaping rake. So where you were, you were doing your food plot and clearing and everything, was there anything growing there at all? No, just dirt. No, it was it was bladed barren off dirt. barren dirt where the bulldozer had run. Okay, and they used it uh, for loading the dirt or up to load the dirt, the loading logs. the timber. Okay, so so we did that. We got one planted. Um, I used the uh, home uh, fertilizer spreader. Spreader. Okay, that worked great. I'll improve next year. Okay. I'll upgrade next year. Okay. Trust me. Uh, so that one went in no problem at all. Uh, I went and take a look at a second one. Uh, that one was a toughie. That, uh, the grass had already started to grow, and this one was more in the woods. Mm-hmm. So I was like, hmm. So I tried to drag it. It's really, really bumpy, and there's some still some pretty good-sized boulders in there. Okay. So I said, okay, I'm going to just... So I, basically, I was putting down fertilizer and, and seed. So I said, all right, I'll fertilize and then I'll seed it and whatever goes, goes. That's my whole thing for this year. That's see what my, happens. My expectations. Got that one in. And then I had one more to do um, that was pretty much a square uh, plot. Dragged it, fertilized it, and seed it. Uh, basically, those three plots took about just about all day. I took a little lunch break, went back, did that one. Uh, Deb asked, you know, you want to stop? I said, no, I, I just want to get them done and in. And mm-hmm. good thing we did. Because Saturday morning, we went for a walk, and then we came back, and it started to rain. And it rained Perfect for a, timing. rained for a couple hours. Okay. So that was awesome. So I'm sitting there, and I still got um, leftover seed, mm-hmm. leftover fertilizer. And I'm like, well, what should, what, what, what should I do with it? So uh, there was a, in the back of the cabin where we have this trail, it, come, it forms a T. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to drag the heck out of it, and then I'll just put the fertilizer I have, the seed I have, and go from there. Okay. So um, Deb got on there and started. It was really, it was kind of grassy. But with the rain, it was really wet. So she dragged it and was just starting to pull up clumps of soil so, uh, soil and, and the grass. And I was grabbing them and throwing them off to the side as she kept going back and forth. And got it, it kind of got to like a soupy mud. Okay. So I'm like, all right, this is good. So I threw the fertilizer down. Um, that plot, I used Climatize. Okay. I had Climatize that you sent me up with. I said, all right, I'm going to put Climatize on here. And I put it down. And then I had some other odds and ends seeds that mm-hmm. I picked up at uh, Tractor Supply or whatever I was doing. I, you know, and I said, okay, I'm, uh, it formed a T. So my main run of my T, which I worked on, has got the Climatize in it and is all good. And then off to the sides, I put, uh, I think, radishes and, and beets. Off to the side. So you got a Frankenstein plot. It, exactly what I called it. It's the Frankenstein plot. It's got a little bit of all the seeds. It's got a little bit of all the fertilizers. So hopefully, see what happens when I go back up there in just under a month. We'll see what started, maybe what didn't. But my uh, outlook for this year is just to get the fertilizer down. If seeds grow, it's a bonus. Okay, so food plots are in. Stands are set. No, the stand is not set. I I, I had a change of heart as to where the stand was going to go after I. Looked at my camera. I'm like, yeah. So you had two cameras out. I had two cameras out, um, and uh, I looked at those pictures and uh, definitely got bear. Got fox, got squirrels. Oh, got a skunk. You see the big furry puppy dogs everybody likes to hug? Uh, yeah, no. No, no wolves. No wolves. Okay. And I think I was surprised I did it on the one camera. But in a way, I'm kind of glad. Right. But uh, got a real nice size of a bear. I think you, you, you saw the one Deb posted. Yeah, yeah, I say he looked like a hog. Yeah. Or a pig, that's something a like nice, that. That's yeah. a nice looking bear. Had a real big head on him. Yep. And uh, both cameras showed bear. Mm-hmm. Uh, both cameras, one showed, I want to say it's either an 8 or a 10. It always came in from the right to left. I got them three times, I think. And the other camera's got a 6 or an 8. I'm not sure. I got one picture. He's walking away, and I can see, you know, you can see that. Mm-hmm turning of the, the antlers so i was like hmm. well i was going to put my stand in x spot but this is kind of changing my thought process so when i go back up in october I, I think i found a spot that i can hide it up in the corner of this new food plot is this a tree stand or a, a box blind this is a tree stand it's a it's a double tree stand okay so i'm going to use that one for probably my october hunting okay i'll probably hunt on the ground come november okay just for warmth sake gotcha uh, but yeah, no, it was a, a great weekend. Um, we, we had uh, some fun up there. <laughs> uh, it got cool. Uh, it actually had frost on Friday morning. Okay. On the, on, on the grass. I looked, I almost slipped off the porch. <laughs> uh, yeah, that hurt. Yeah. That's where you need a trail cam. <laughs> so you can see that. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, 
But yeah, it was it was kind of cold. It was 28 degrees, I think, at the one morning. But got the fire going. Everything's good. Everything's good at camp. Yeah, everything's good at camp. Ready to go. Um, my cousin, uh, he's heading up this Thursday because his bear hunting starts. Okay. So hunting there at camp? No, he's not. He's going to be hunting uh, northwest. He thinks he was having a he was uh, getting a guide to bait for him. And then he's going to provide the bait, and then he's going to have these spots set up for him. Is he hunting? Is it public land or private land he's hunting? I do believe it's public, federal land. Okay, so he's got some guys taking care of getting his bait set for right, him. Right, exactly. That. Gotcha. Okay. And then, uh, well, I told him, I said, well, look, if that doesn't pan out for you, there's, <laughs> there's a decent sized bear on the property right. that's running it. Right. Uh, also, found out, talking to our neighbors, they asked us if we saw the three legged bear. Hmm. I said, what? You mean three little bears? No, three legged bears. Or three little pigs. Three little. Three, <laughs> Three, yeah. Three-legged bear. It was a three-legged bear. We're like, what? So they explained in the springtime, they had this bear come out in its hind leg. It was just kind of dragging, dragging, and it, it was it was not good. And he was really weak. He'd walk a couple steps and then just lay right down. Huh. But somehow, it, it the leg is gone because they said it's a three-legged bear, and it's gotten stronger as the year went on. Okay. They, they actually saw it um, down the road swatting. At bugs or something in the field, so okay, it, it's it's they'll he said if you see it walking you'll notice it. So it's a rear leg that's bad on it. It's a rear leg that's bad on it. So if he's stand, if he's swatting his stuff, that means he's using his front paws. He's got that balance down. Right, he's either got the balance or he was yeah right. Something. So uh, I didn't see have him on trail camera. We got uh, small bears on camera, the one big bear, but uh, I got the cameras back out. So excited to see what the uh, the bucks are looking okay. You know, got some spikes. Mm-hmm. For our area, it looks good. Got And what even looks better is um, the fawn crop. Right. Got some decent fawns out there. They were in camp, matter of fact, when we were in camp. So that kind of tells me that the predators haven't gotten to them. Yeah, that's, you know, that's the problem we're having. I, I, and I'll talk more about it on my part, what I saw when I was up at our camp. But that's good you're seeing fawns. You got some fawn recruitment. Exactly. It, and I was happy to see that. I was happy to see them on camera. Happy mm-hmm. to... Okay, the fawns have made it um, into August mm. when I pulled the cameras. Um, so it, the, the the recruitment is good, and that means hopefully we have a, a mild winter. And so the, the fawn, the, the deer numbers in general, hopefully mm-hmm. come back. Okay, good, good deal. So yeah, we uh, and then we hightailed it out of there south. It was like, <laughs> we're getting out of there. <laughs> made your way home. Oh, did we ever. Yeah. I tell you what, that is, I, I don't know how it went, but I could not imagine being on that other side of the bridge waiting i i heard uh horror stories so <laughs> we'll just leave it at that right exactly so but uh no that was uh our week up north um weekend up north and uh had a good time to get it get everything situated put out uh i did put two feeders out um i bought the outpost feeders uh mm-hmm. in january i think at I one of the those. shows yep and so uh i put those out um they're gonna last three weeks unless something attacks them Unless a uh, tripod comes in, huh? Is that what you name them? Yeah, we Tri-biders. see them. Because, okay, so here's what problem I had, right? Now, those feeders, uh, you're, you're supposed to throw them up over a branch. Pull them up. Pull them up. Mm-hmm. Let them hang, right? What do you do if you got straight trees and no lower limbs? Hmm. Ah, that's the problem I had. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm looking around going. Cut all your trees, all oh, your mature trees. Oh, okay, uh, this isn't good. So what I did is I kind of fudged it a little bit. I, I, I took a... A, a, a strap put it i climbed up on top of my uh utv in mm-hmm. the bed reached up as high as i could wrapped this strap around the tree with the hook mm-hmm. and then just mounted it there on the back side of the tree gotcha so hope for the best hope for the best if i go yeah. up there and they're missing <laughs> bears got them and use them as a chew toy yeah hopefully he doesn't come after me with a with him swinging a man right right but i got those out there i also started uh two mineral licks uh great time looking for a, a some new stumps that are out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I picked a stump that was just off two of the food plots, and uh, I put down some minerals on top of the stump, and uh, we'll see how it goes. The next day, I, I, we did that. Uh, went out there, and I had turkeys in the food plot. Okay, they were up on the grassy one up in the woods. I come, we come roaring up the trail, you know, and all of a sudden these turkeys go flying. You know, they're, they're running. Right. I'm like, oh, turkeys are here. Well, when's the next time you're going to be up at camp? Uh, I will be heading back up the. S- Second week of October for a week of bow hunting. So roughly five weeks. Um, right. So you should see some growth on your food plots. Absolutely. If that, they're going to grow. That's what I'm hoping. See some kind of growth. Okay. You know, uh-huh. that that's, uh, like I said, I put down um, winter rye 
and some red clover. Okay. And then the other plots I got the climatize in. And uh, but I just want to get something established. Most importantly, I'm trying to get that fertilizer into the ground mm-hmm. to start doing what it needs to do. Next year, when I go up in uh, to open the cabin in May, I'll probably pull some soil samples that'll set me up for what I need to do in July of next year. Right on. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, no. Otherwise, it's looking good up there. Uh, <laughs> fall colors. I tell you, looking here, trees are starting trees to turn. Are, ferns are dying. Yeah. And that's a good thing. So. Yep. So. Yeah. All right. I tell you what. Well, when we step outside, we take our first break. We come back. We'll run down uh, kind of what I ran into last weekend and uh, and continue on with the show. So we'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, everybody. Second segment of the show, back in the cabin. Have you noticed a little chill in the air here lately? Yes, in the mornings? I did. Matter of fact, I was uh, contemplating that uh, this week as I was at work. I parked and I had to walk across the campus kind of thing. A little brisk? It was a little brisk. Yeah. I got, felt good. I got up and left. Uh, up north. I went up north last week, and I left a Saturday morning bright and early. Actually, Right before sunrise. And okay. I, I got up north. I was heading, uh, I turned across across the Asabo. I'd take a back way in now to camp. And it was uh, 34 degrees. The fog was hitting. The closer I got to the Asabo River, the fog got really, really dense. So when I got to the the bridge there, I pulled off, took some photos of the okay. Jeep down by the water. Yeah. It's just beautiful. I mean, it was awesome. It was probably still too, wasn't it? Still, yeah. It was It was dead still, dead calm. Uh, you could hear the river just crackling, you know, rolling along and... Yeah, man, it's good for the soul. So it, it is. That's uh, there. Nothing more beats like a crisp morning where it's calm. Mm-hmm. You get to camp and you want to have a cup of coffee and just sit and stare. You know? Yeah, you do. But uh, that Saturday we had our our meeting, um, our co-op meeting up at uh, the offices there at Alban uh, Education and Wildlife Research Center. Yes, you so. and Anna Middling and. Uh, Ron Siegel. Ron Siegel. Yeah, we had a, our co-op meeting there. had a, had a nice little gathering with some people, and uh, the one thing that was that I, I actually learned some things coming out of this again, and that's that's what I like about these habitat workshops or or co-op workshops and everything. And uh, you know, just kind of briefly run down the two things that I get, got out of this meeting uh, from Anna and, and a guy from QDMA, the Northeastern Chapter of Michigan, was there. He, he gave a little talk, and it had to do with. Um, like fawn recruitment and buck to doe ratios and things of that nature. Um, you know, and I've, I've done a lot of reading back and forth on this stuff, but the one thing I, I never knew was they were talking about buck to doe ratio numbers. What does it take to maintain a healthy, uh, just to maintain your pop- current population on your property? And the, let's just, for the sake of numbers, let's use the number 100 like we always do. Let's say you've got 100 does on your property. Okay. And if you've got 100 does on your property, just to maintain that 100 doe level, you have to shoot 33% of your does. 33 to, does. To maintain 100. To maintain 100. A third of your yeah. doe crop yep. needs to be taken every year to maintain 100. Just to maintain. If you shoot less, the following year you'll have more deer. More deer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Got it. Yeah. You know, and the thing that we're seeing right now in our property, um, our camp manager walk. He he walks every morning. Actually, he's getting ready for an elk hunt. You know, he so he gets out, and does his morning walk, and he starts at one end of the property and walks to the other. You know, and cruises by the food plots, and he's seeing every day just about 150 deer on a regular basis. 
you know, and I told him, I was like, man, you know, last year we, we shot 23 or 24 does. On right. Property. Exactly. And I, I, I don't, I, I could think I could safely say we probably don't have 50 bucks on the property. You know, um, I just don't see those numbers. So with that being said, you know, if we don't shoot 33 minimum, minimum 33, if you're not, yeah. if you're telling me the numbers, the minimum 33 yeah. just to maintain what you yeah. have this year. Yeah, exactly. So it's, uh, I was like shocked. I was like, really? I said, you have to shoot that many. He's like, yes. The, the, the equations and the numbers and the research shows that a third of your doe harvest, or every doe's need to be harvested every year just to maintain that, that balance of what you currently have. So, you know, moving forward from there, uh, you've got to take those proper counts and figure out, you know, what you've got. And, and right now, I mean, when we look at our property, the browse line is so high. Our understory is just, there is no understory. It's getting on our chewed away. You know, and we've seen that with my food plot. You know, we planned that food plot third week of May. And by the 1st of July, the, the food's gone. They, they literally ate it all. I've got a growth cage. I had a camera on that. I've got trail cam pictures of deer in the field. And you can see the growth. And then all of a sudden, you can see it dwindling. And then you can see the regrowth of the weeds because there's nothing there. Right, exactly. So, you yeah. almost it almost sounds like at this point you almost need to to plant in May and almost replant in July. Well, we're planting right now. Actually, right, we're right. just we're a couple of weeks late. We've had a lot of rain up there. Um farmer was supposed to be in the field here this week and I just checked tonight. He came down to the camp tonight to look at it and it was still too wet to plant, so he's going to try to hit it this week. Really? Yeah, they've got a ton of rain up there. Yeah, so. one thing uh, northern Michigan has not had a problem with has been rain. Is rain exactly so? So yeah, I've got uh, Carnage Brassicas getting ready to go in in the field. Um, the border patrol is about six foot high. Uh, I learned some things with that about how I planted it and what I need to do next year. Okay, to make it seamless. I've got gaps in it the way I, I you know we broadcast planted it. Um, so next year, you know, we, we may run with a, a small planter on that, or we're going to have to plant it a lot heavier than what we did. Uh, you know, and like I said, this year was trial, but man, Absolutely. But man there's places, you know, that's, it's, it's at least six foot tall. You know, a lot of guys are getting eight, 10 foot, you know, they're, they're talking about eight and 10 foot tall, uh, border patrol. You got to remember what we're dealing with up there, you know, right. as far as our, our, uh, soil conditions. Very loamy. Yes. So, uh, with that, we're, you know, we'll, we'll try some different things next year and, and try to get that, that better, but I'm still happy with what I, what I got. And what I've noticed is the deer are running the outside of that border patrol towards my swamp where you set in a tree oh, stand. Oh, okay. Yeah, last yeah. Year. they're coming coming down that field. Yeah, they're running on, on that, that back side. Okay, yeah. They're using it as a, they'll run it, and then they'll come into the field. So they're using it kind of as, as a guard. Right. You know, to get into that field and cover. So, um, yeah, I set up a nice ambush point on a tree stand to, to get into that nice. field. Nice. But, uh, but getting back to the, to the co-op meeting, um, not to put myself too far ahead of myself here. Uh, yeah, so that was one thing we learned. You know, a third of the dose. So that really opened my eyes to, to some things. And, and it also goes hand in hand with what we're seeing on the property now, some of the conditions we're seeing. So we know we got to get in there and hammer a little more. Um, something I had heard in the past, and I'd, I'd, I'd put thought into it and kind of rolled around in my head a little bit, talked with our camp manager and at one point, and we were really unsure, but it, it got restated in the this time at this meeting was about taking does early in the season. A lot of guys like to take, you know, their does later in the season. It's like, if you shoot all your does now, then, you know, you have no does there for the bucks to come in and service, you know, it, oh, they're yeah, used okay. as a natural decoy. I see what they're saying, yeah. But when you have an overpopulation problem, the theory behind it is, okay, so you've got all these does on your property. You're going to feed them for another two months to three months to get them to where they get serviced, and then you want to whack them. So why why are you letting – and the thing is they eat about five to six pounds of food per day. So why not take them early? If what, Yeah, and, and, and let that food be there for your, your fawn recruitment, your, your better doe production, and also your buck production. Right. You know, and the other thing we're seeing up there is, is the size of the antlers. We just don't have the nutrition on the ground to, to build big antlers. So if you're letting animals sit and eat on your food plots that you're going to kill anyway, why – not take them out during take some out during bow season. Right, you know, use your try to get some of that pressure. Try to off. start using your allotment that you think you're going to have for the yeah. year right away. Yeah, you're not hurting anything. Right, so we're looking at maybe a third and a third and a third yep. um, of what we're going to shoot this year. Uh, that's that's kind of our mindset right now, and we got to talk it over and try really kind of come down to some brass tacks of what we're going to do um, and what we're seeing on trail cam. So yeah, it was it was eye opening. You know, th- those two things in particular, um, and really looking at it. So. 
It uh, you know, kind that, of my eyes. And that's awesome information you get for having one of those meetings. It was, you know. And, you know, Anna Mitterling from MUCC DNR, you know, she's that co-op liaison. Um, the amount of information that she give give us, uh, you know, it's just, it's awesome. You know, it gives you ideas on how to, how to set up a co-op, different things to look for in your property and put properties together and how to hunt different pieces of land. Uh, then the guy from uh, our... Uh, local chapter there of QDM make him and you know and he's the one who's talking about the the 33 uh, percent you know of taking oh, okay, the does yeah. you know so we, we got some numbers that way and and he got into talking about um, you know the proper buck to doe ratio how it how it manifests itself on the back end if it, if it's out of whack what happens to the to the deer herd you know how how a population can crash and they say and Anna was talking about this it'll actually the population will spike you'll see a quick uptick but right before a crash. Oh, and okay. she says, Northeastern Michigan right now, we're seeing a, an uptick in population. And if we don't do something up there soon, I'm not talking about just on our property. I'm talking about the whole area. You're talking the whole area. We're going to see a crash. And, you know, we, we've got a problem right now in Northeastern Michigan with spruce budworm, which is wiping out, uh, you know, habitat as far as places for cover. And then we've got oak wilt that's going wild right now in the Northeastern Michigan, which is wiping out our uh, our acorn crops, e- mass e- crops. E- e- the food. Yeah, so when you you combine them two together, and and then you've got an overpopulation, and there's not many, many food plots. I, I'm afraid, you know, in the next five to ten years, we we might see something here. If it doesn't get taken care of pretty quick, we might see a uh, a big die off. I, I guess the the important thing to hear out of that whole thing is it's just not your local area. It's overall the entire it's wide, general. Yeah, it's widespread. You know, and I think a lot of that goes back to you know with the fact of talking about. You know, we, we're having this this dynamic now between older generation of hunters and newer generation of hunters, and, and, and where those theories and, and the science lies, where the the younger people are, are, are grabbing a hold of that and using you know using technology to get some of that information, right. versus some of the the older mindsets of of not shooting does. You know, it's it's just not good for it's not good for the deer herd. Exactly. You know, it's not good for the deer herd. It's not good for it, it, it's going to be bad. Yeah. Yeah. It has the potential to to really cause some damage up there. So Exactly. And and you videotaped this all. Yes. Yes. Actually, uh we've got a link on our page on our Up North Journal page. Um Hey Chad Habermill, I don't mean to <laughs> jump in here. Yeah, you did. Uh Hey Chad, I actually I just sent you a voicemail so before the show, so make sure you check that. Uh, but don't call Mike. That's right. Don't call me right now. We're on a live stream. So for those of you on the podcast, uh, you got to go to the live stream and see what we're talking about. Right. Um, but yes, you videotape these segments. Yes. So you can see them on either the uh, the, the All Band uh, Wildlife and uh, Education Research Center's page, or you can go over to Up North Journal page, and you can see it there as We've well. We've shared it over there, and they're having a giveaway. Yeah, they're having a rifle giveaway. So make sure you sign up for that uh, if you're here in the Michigan area, especially if you're up in that northeastern Michigan area. Right. Um, go know, take a look. Go take to. a look uh, and look at how you to uh, get entered in a chance to win a gun. Yeah, and see some of the projects that, that we're, we're trying to work on, um, and some of the, the the innovative technologies that we're trying to to utilize. Uh, there, there's some opportunities there for some private landowners maybe to uh, to help wildlife out. You know, we're we're, we're we're starting to slowly work towards that goal yep. of, of becoming uh, this, this you know, information center, so to speak, and getting information out to people. That's so. awesome. I mean, it's just, uh, number one goal, healthy herd, and how yep. we're going to get there, yep. right? And, and yep. to tell you the truth, the shocking, you're telling me, have to shoot a third of 100 just to maintain 100. That's amazing. Yeah, a third of your doe population just to maintain your population. You and, know? and so it's, and, and see, and I can't shoot any, so I'm hoping my, right. my, my doe population is just... Uh, did they say if you don't, how many you would have the following year? He run down some numbers, and I think they're on that video. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I just the one thing right. that stuck in my mind was the fact right. of you know we're I, trying to decrease the numbers, not increase them. So you know. I just wonder. Okay, so if I have ten does, but I haven't yeah. been able to shoot any of them. Yeah. How many more typically yeah. should I have the next year? Yeah. Well, it depends on your fawn recruitment and what you've got for predation and things of that nature. Right. You know? And that's something else that we're seeing on our property is, is predation uh, of our our fawns. Um, I was encouraged. I seen more fawns this time I was up than I have all year. Com- oh, good. Com- combined. Um, I seen four or five different fawns uh, on trail camera and in person. So That's awesome. That's a good sign. It means they're mm-hmm. sc- escaping those little guys. Yeah. So, we, But we have found a lot of dead fawns that were predated uh, on the property by coyote, bobcat, or bear, what have you. So. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, it was a great weekend. I got trail cams um cards taken care of got 
cameras put out, got them moved. Um, I moved some tree stands from last year. They were out in the field. They weren't up, but they were out in the field. So I got those and moved a couple of locations. Okay. Um, and one location I was talking about the border patrol, You're right? And I'm in, I'm right in between the border patrol and the swamp. Um, and I've got it in a tree that you you cannot see. I, I'm just sitting on top. It looks like I'm sitting on top of a white pine tree, about 16 foot in the air. And all you can see basically is my chest up if I'm sitting in the tree stand. That's awesome. So I and I got 20 yard shooting uh, lanes in four different directions you know and it's it's i think it's going to be deadly this year sounds like you're ready to wax some doves i'm ready to shoot some bucks and does there you, you know. go um, i'm hoping you start seeing some bucks on camera that uh i've seen a few nothing that, that i would like says hey shoot me right right um, nothing that's jumping we got a lot of small bucks on on camera um there's one that's I don't know. I, I, I need a better look. I need to get eyes on him to really be able to tell if he's a... I don't think he's three-and-a-half-year-old buck. Okay. I really don't. I think he's more in that two-and-a-half-year-old range, and, uh, you know, we'll go from there and see what happens. Exactly. That's so. that's all we can do. It, when we get there, and like I said, I got this... I think it's a, an eight or a ten on mm-hmm. camera, and it's like, I, I like to see it in person. Right. So. Right, right. I got you. So, but no, everything's going good. Uh, like I said, we've got stands Excellent. up. Got cameras up. I got a couple more places I want to put some stuff. I need I need another tree stand. I need a couple more cameras. So you know we'll see how that all shakes out. But uh, you know I'm I'm getting ready. I'm get I'm it's getting here quick. Well, so it is the tenth tenth of goose season has started in five days. We got yep, small game. Yep, five more days. Small game season starts. Bear season starts. Bear season starts. I think next, Saturday, next Friday, Friday or Saturday. Saturday, one or the other. Yeah, here in Michigan. Okay. So yeah. yeah, my cousin will be up there. So yeah, we awesome. got a guy at our camp that's hunting this year. So and speaking of that, we got some product here that we're going to talk about in just a minute. Uh, we're going to go to break. We come back. We're going to talk about. We've got some bottles sitting here in front of us. Yes, we do. So um, and that's something that you brought into the cabin tonight that we want to talk about. Right. Well, let's do it then. Let's go to our next break. Here we're going to step outside. We'll be right back. We come back. Uh, we're going to talk about what we got sitting here on the table. For those of you on the podcast, you're going to have to tune into the live stream and go back and check it out. So what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend, to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, everybody. As I struggle to dig in my Third pocket, Third segment of the show, and we're getting knife into here. some product that uh, you're going to have to turn into the live stream to actually see it. But we're going to talk about it on the air. Um, Danny asked me if I had a knife to carve into this thing with in my pocket. Are you kidding me? Really? Right, right. There you go. Are you gonna hurt, am I going to hurt myself? Well, that depends on how you you open a package. Right. Uh-huh. Don't don't cut towards me. Well, you're way over there. If it gets that far, he's trying to slice me here on the show. Right. Ooh, oh, I can smell it Chad out. Habermill said Sunday the seventeenth is the opener of Bear here in Michigan. So it's Sunday, okay? Yep. Okay. Yep. I knew talking about bear season, and that's what we we got something here we want to talk about, right? From actually, this is from Nick Percy. Okay, so, Killer food plots, right? So yesterday was Saturday, and uh, I went to the Woods and Water Show in Imlay City, mm-hmm. and lo and behold, who do I run into? But Nick Percy, right? Killer food plots, right on. And uh, we got to talking. Hey, Jim Beasley, just joined the show. Jim Beasley. Oh, man, you just got me in the eye. See? It smells fruity. It smells like blueberry. Right. And what better way as to use it a attractant as blueberry would be for bears? Absolutely. That's that's what that's made for, right? This is exactly what this is made by. It's uh, Killer Food Plots Suffuse Attractant. It's uh, blueberry flavored, and I just sprayed Mike with it, and he now smells like a blueberry. I do smell like blueberries. See? 
And uh, basically, I talked to, to Nick on how he used this product. He used this product when he was up in Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan bear okay. hunting. Okay. Uh, he did not get a bear. Okay. He hit a bear, but didn't get the bear. Okay. Any results that he's seen from this? Yeah. Okay. So exactly what he told me. Uh, he started up high. Okay. And worked his way down, and then he sprayed it on a tree. Okay. And as he was sitting there, he had a bear come in, and the bear started raking the tree, trying to, it, trying to get, trying thought, to get to it. He thought the blueberries were inside the tree. Yep, I got gotcha. you. So, um, this this thing is, uh, it smells awesome, and uh, but uh, he has a whole line of this stuff out that, uh, as you can see on the, the seven different bottles. There we got seven. Or, there's actually eight. eight. Things. Where's the other one? At? I don't have it, but I think there's eight different things he's got. Okay, so we got seven with so, us. Yeah. Um, this one is specifically for bear. It's uh, a blueberry extract type thing. Uh, you get them to react, you attract them, and then you get them to distract too. They're too busy sniffing this stuff or they can get into position. You can shoot them. Okay. So is he putting this near his stand? Is he putting it on the bait? Is he putting it near the bait? He's putting it near a stand. Near his... Anywhere he, he kind of leads them in. He's leading them in with this. Right. You know, kind of leaving him a little trail. Raise it up on, on high and brings it down okay. almost to where he said he put it on the tree. Okay. So that was pretty cool. Um, so that's blueberry, definitely uh, a winner for uh, for bear. Okay. Did he say what what the uh, the price on this was? Uh, he didn't tell me the price on it. Um, but if you go to killerfoodplots.com. and check it out. Check it out. Directions apply liberally to feed, bait stations, wicks, foliage, tree bark, and dripper bottles. Anything you can spray yeah. it on or pour it into, you can do that. Yeah. Do not apply directly to skin or clothing or hunting gear because you might get eat. <laughs> you, you, we've all, if, if, if you haven't seen that video of the guy that actually did that with Buckler. Yeah, right, right. That's your comedic comedic uh, appreciation. Stimulating the bear's keen sense of smell. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so there you go. Uh, bear hunters, get Ten out there. Bottle. Ten ounce bottle. Killer food plots, the suffused blueberry for a bear. All right. So we, And we got some more. Oh, ones we here. got some more. Here, okay. let, let's take a... Give me this one, and give me this one. This is one of them. And where's the bag? Oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. So, for deer hunting, he's got, in suffuse again, Red Hot 24 uh, Suffuse Attractant. This is hot dough bedding. That dough bedding? The dough bedded. Okay, so this... So, that's your uh, hot dough pee. Hold still, I'm going to spray no, you you're, this. No, I am not opening that <laughs> See one. what this tastes like. <laughs> yeah, no. I am not opening that one. And then he's got one that's... Uh, that one is your red hot dough. Okay. And then he's got one that's fresh bedding. Okay. Uh, kind of a, more of a... Calming effect? Calming, bedded down deer. Uh, it, it's got different... Um, the ones in there. It doesn't alert the deer. So is this like a pheromone-based type yes, thing? Yes, these two are. Okay. And that's why... Uh, you don't put this on your body. Right. And again, you can start, you know, you can spray it as you walk into your stand and, and get it more of a, a cloud around your area, your hunting stand when you get there. But uh, he's got these two for deer season. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got the Red Hot 24 and you've got the the bedding one, the okay. fresh bedded. All right. What else we got here? So now, so we've got the, the bears covered. We've got the deer uh, set. Black dirt. Black dirt. Smells like dirt? Smells like dirt. And it smells like dirt. Okay. So this is this That's is a cover scent. Cover scent. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then the other three I got today. Woo. White oak acorn. Okay. Corn's up there. That's corn. And this is uh, red apple. Okay. Uh, again, uh, if you can bait, you can spray this right on uh, the bait or... Like, uh, I know in my area, they love apples. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I'm walking in and I want to spray along a little scent of apples, okay, be a good thing for there. Corn is another good one that they seem to like. Uh, deer can't refuse acorn. Right, absolutely. That, that's like their crack. Right. So, uh, but here, again, attractants, 10-ounce uh, bottles, you liberally get out there and you spray it in your area. You can spray a trail. It even says, like you read, you put it in dripper bottles. It, right. There's more applications than just the spray thing. Gotcha. So you get out there and you use it. Um, so imagine that's got a screw top where you can pour it into a bottle for a dripper. Yeah. Okay. And uh, But definitely, uh, Killer Food Blocks, Nick Percy's over there been working on these and finally got these down. Uh, he got it down to where this the spray bottle is a nice, fine stream. It's not a... a it's like an atomizer instead of a, a, a stream of liquid. Correct. It gives you that nice atomizer, the flowing. 
calming effect as you sprayed in the woods? You calm me down just just saying that the way it, you did. See exactly, <laughs> and that's you know. And if I wanted to calm you down, I could spray you the red apple. Yeah. And if you look at this, I was looking at these. It's it's all clear. All of them are clear. You can see through the bottom. Right. Yeah. That's okay. kind of cool. But uh, yeah, uh, so we're gonna try these this year. We got these for the fall. Um, I'm sure we'll be having some feedback from us on how they're doing, what they're doing. I think I got a, I think I got a little test I want to do with that in my backyard in my, okay, in my. Uh, well, the blueberry one here for bear. I'm not bear hunting this year. You and I are talking about a bear hunt next year, but you know we want to get this in the field right now. And actually, one of the guys I hunt with. Uh, who is on the live stream, he just kind of checked it out and everything, said he'd like to try it out. So we're going to get it into his hands and, uh, you know, get a report back on, on his success. Absolutely. You know. you know, get us some pictures back and tell us how it, how it went. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. we'll see it sitting on top of a head of a bear. Absolutely, yeah. That would be awesome. That would be cool. Uh, once again, uh, don't forget, people, it's getting close to, so get your orders in if you're going to want to order it. Uh, yeah, before they're sold out. Right, so. But I just want to bring those to our attention. We got them in the house. We'll be trying them out. How was Woods and Water, by the way? Woods and Water was uh, <laughs> busy. Busy, okay. I waited a half hour to get into the place, okay. at least, which well, was nice. Well, as Jason Radecki was saying, he, it's the first time he's been in 15 years, and he said to him it, it seems smaller. You know, and honestly, I haven't been there probably in that long as well. It's been a long you time know, since I've been. Jason, um, the weather was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming he was there yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. He didn't say. But the amount of things there, I think, was actually more than previous years that I remember. Okay. And and, and I stopped in. I saw Mark Hammer. Um, like I said, we saw Nick Percy there. Mm-hmm. Um, saw Jack there from uh, the tree stands. Mm-hmm. Um, Jim Beasley. Was okay. There. And Paul Penix was there. Okay. So I uh, made my rounds with them guys. Talked with them. Um, it was packed. Uh, and, and Jason's kind of, kind of hit on something I think we've talked about before. In Jason shows. said he was there this morning. Oh, this morning. Yeah. He just chimed in. Okay. All right. Um, I think Krishner was there today too. Um, so the, um, I think what's happening and I think this is why Woods and Water is actually one of the better ones mm-hmm. because we haven't had a show for so long. True. True. And all of a sudden this is the last show before seasons. Okay. And you could tell that with some people and what they were buying or what they were looking for. Okay. And uh, but in January, February, and March, mm-hmm. that's all that's out there. Is shows. That's right. Show, 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 show. So it's kind of like I think, and I, I'm trying to remember back. Did you ever go to the outdoor Rama when it's at State Fair? No, I've never been to it when it was at the State Fair. Every time I went, it was in Novi. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. So this is taking us way back mm-hmm. to when the State Fairgrounds was the State Fairgrounds, and I went to the outdoor Rama. And that used to take up two full, uh, one was a hockey rink, mm-hmm. and the other one was uh, the, the, the barn style. Right. But that used to go for two weeks long. Okay. You know, that used to be... It was a festival. It was a festival. And that's down to just, I think, four days now or something. Yeah. And so now you're seeing it. And then that one uh, is at the end of the February, mm-hmm. which is just after Lansing show, which is just after... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of overwhelming. It's like... Boom, you know, boom, 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 yeah. The the West Side Show, the Lansing Show, the MUCC Show. Um, yeah, pick a show. Well, Chris says that, uh, yeah, it was busier later in the day, and that he had heard yesterday was busier than today. Y- yesterday so. was, was crazy. It okay. Was, I'll so, give him that. They, so Jason was, Radecki was there today in the right. morning, and then you were there yesterday. So there, I was, Chris is saying it was busier yesterday than today. Okay, I was there yesterday from noon until 5.30. Okay. And... Uh, busy it was good to see the people out good to see uh people spending money good to see uh they had the jumping dogs there it's kind of cool they had uh this one this is funny they had a, a bucket of water mm-hmm. and everybody kept looking in this bucket as they walked by like, what's that like what's in the bucket right i was like oh what's going on they had one of those uh the decoy that's feeding with their butt up okay for a, it, a waterfowl yes okay duck. and it would splash okay so then it's funny it's just if you put a you put a bucket out for somebody to look in, they're they'll look in it. it. Right, gotcha. Right. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, the Woods and Water Show this year. Uh, I last year it rained, I think, but I didn't go last year. I went two years ago, and, but this year it was it was really good. Okay. I liked it. Well, well, people spending money. Did you spend any money? Did you bring anything home new? Uh, I I didn't <laughs> I didn't spend anything I, I didn't spend anything for myself. Uh, okay. My daughter uh, got a, a new puppy. Okay. 
We went to the puppy tent, which I am blaming on a fellow coworker. Because when I was walking in, this guy's waving to me through the fence, and he's holding this puppy, and I'm looking at this guy, and mm-hmm. the guy's name's Greg. Mm-hmm. So we get through the fence, pay our money, and said, Greg? Hey, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. What's that? Oh, that's a new lab puppy. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, where'd you get that? Oh, the puppy tent. I said, oh, thanks. So first thing he does, we walk up to each other. Pet the dog. N- not even say hi. He takes the puppy and hands it to my daughter. Here, hold this. Right. Oh, I'm like, oh, boy. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Saturday was... My Jack Russell Terrier's 18th birthday. Okay. And so we made our way around, and we ended up in the puppy tent. So you celebrate his birthday by buying a replacement. (laughs) Oh, happy birthday, dog. You're going bye-bye, and here's the one that's going to replace you. So we ended up getting... (laughs) Oh, my. We ended up getting... uh, She got a... Mountain Feist. Mountain Feist, okay. Which is uh, just like a rat terrier, Jack Russell size, 25 to 35 pound dog. It's going to be a (laughs) ball full of fun. And I'm thinking... What does your 18-year-old dog think about this? Uh, he can't see it, hear it, or smell it. So, so it doesn't He can matter. smell it. Yeah. Can't hear it or see it. So okay. He doesn't care. All right. Now, my other two dogs that... They're kind of, <laughs> but it's kind of funny watching them because he's a little puppy and wants to play and they don't know what to do yet. <laughs> Jason says that's thinking ahead. There, there you go. See? Yeah, replacing the dog. But uh, no, okay. uh, a mountain feist. Okay. Gonna make a hunting dog out of it or a shed dog? Whatever she wants to do. It's her puppy. Okay. It's, it's not my dog. It's her dog. That's what you say now. No, uh, no, 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 no. That is not my dog. That's what you say now. So, okay. anyways, uh, it's a cute little gray and white thing that looks like a possum right now. Okay, folks, tune in in about three months and let's see if it's still her dog. <laughs> it will still be her dog. I will get her on the show and she will talk about that dog. If okay. We have to. Okay. All right. So, but anyways, uh, I tell you what, it is so funny when you have the puppy tent there, uh-huh. and they've got in a cage live birds. Okay, yeah, you can tell the pointers. Okay, and they had there was this one. Uh, he or she looked like a a little bit older dog, mm-hmm. had the gray gray face, but man, she was locked up on that cage, had her nose probably about two feet away, and would not move. Locked that on, just locked. And these little birds, these birds in there in this <laughs> cage. I'm like, boy, if they only let those things out, <laughs> right? That's good. But uh, they had some, uh, they had some lab pups. They they had some snow white lab pups. That's cool. That is really cool. I don't know that I've ever seen any snow white ones. Yeah, it was uh, it was cool. And then uh, they uh, they had all labs. They had German short hairs. Mm-hmm. They had uh, Britneys. They had uh, it was it was cool. It was the best tent there, of course. Right. It was busy, and then we went to the other tent, and it was even busier. Well, Jason says it's going to be your dog when she goes to college. No, 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 no. <laughs> She's staying home for college. So <laughs> <laughs> he talks a good game right now. We'll see what happens. Oh no! But anyways, uh, yep, got a new puppy. Um, so he is he is planted in her room. All right. That's where the crate's at. That's where everything's at. It's her dog. She okay. was up at 5 o'clock this morning taking him out. So. All right. That'll last for a week. No, it won't. <laughs> All right. I tell you what, we're up against our last break here. We're going to take our last break. We come back. We're going to talk about uh, my day yesterday down at Cabela. So we'll be right back after this. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of feel and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. 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 Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential.
Welcome back. Last segment of the show. Feels good to be back in the cabin. Oh, you know, it does. Um, you know, we do the outside thing. That was pretty cool. I did yeah. really enjoy that. Though. Yeah. I, I got to shoot this week. That's definitely a thing to get back on the... I got to shoot. Actually, I'm taking my bow uh, uh, and having something looked at on it. Right. Yep. So. Exactly. So, um, so but, then I'm uh, going to start shooting again after that. I got, got a little noise in it. You do. And we think we figured it out, but we'll get it checked out first. Right. So... Well, I was at Woods and Water. You were at Cabela's. I was at Cabela's. I was working for Vortex this weekend. Um, we talked about this, I believe, on the last show or the one before that. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> because we we pre-recorded last week's show because of Labor Day. But uh, yeah, I was down. I went back down to Dundee and uh, trained my replacement for Vortex at the Dundee store. They're shipping me to Chesterfield. Was the store busy? No, it was dead. It it it, it might have been the worst Saturday I've seen there, maybe ever. It, I thought about that. Now you mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, it was dead. It was actually. It was a beautiful day. Yeah, it was. It's was picture perfect. It. I mean, it was a little cool if it was cloudy and windy. But mm-hmm. I was thinking about that, and it, woods and water was packed, but yours was dead. Yeah. But then again, you had the Michigan game down that way. Yeah, yeah. I had to deal with some of those people going to uh, the store. I had, and actually, a little bit coming home. wasn't too bad. Um, it was when I called you on the phone yeah. and the traffic was backed up. Actually, it was, it was, I think an accident Oh, at the uh, 14 split. So, but yeah, I got by that and it was clear sail until some, some ding dong decided to pull out in front of me in a construction zone that was dead stopped. And I had to slam on my brakes and put the Jeep sideways in the road. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That always makes for a good ride home. Yeah. I, uh, it's a good thing I didn't have a Barrett 50 cal mounted at the front of my Jeep. You'd have blown him up. <laughs> it would be nothing left of that guy, man. That's right. So, but, I'll, okay, so tell me the goods of Ed Cabela's yesterday. Not a lot of good to talk about, man. It was it was dead. Um, it just, just wasn't a lot of people in the store. It, it just it wasn't. See, and at Cabela's now, see, this is this is the weird thing. is they're not Except good. at the gun counter. Gun counter was busy. Was it? Yeah, yeah as really always. Good. But, you know, Cabela's isn't having their dear nation to the last weekend in I know. You know? And for a lot of people, we're going to be down there on the 30th. Yeah. But a lot of people that hunt the first, yeah, they're yeah. going to be Gone. getting out of there. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. It, it is what it is. It man. is. And just one of the things we've talked about. Yeah. And, you know, we've seen. But, uh, yeah, shocking that it wasn't busier. But in no. a way... I'm, Chris said he was slammed in Chesterfield store, so that's good. I'm looking forward to being there next weekend, actually. Right. Exactly. And, and, and Chris, there's a reason why you're slammed in Chesterfield. Yeah. Right. Yeah, especially in the archery department. Right. So, but uh, yeah, I'll be over there Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday at okay. Chesterfield for Vortex. So if it, you know if you guys are looking at some optics, anything that uh, questions, whatever, let me know. Um, stop by the store, come into the optics counter. Come on down and say hi to Mike. Yeah, come on over. So. He'll be the guy in the black shirt with the Vortex on the shirt. Sh- yep. So, um, you know, just looking at their product, they got the new Fury out. Uh, that's the one thing that's new this year. Uh, look for this in your store real, real soon. Uh, Vortex is uh, trying to actually not trying. They did. Uh, they their their rangefinder. They they made a an eight fifty series. You know, they started with a one thousand. Right. They went to the fifteen hundred, and and they were priced accordingly to those different yardages uh, in comparable uh, rangefinders. Right. Well. As we see a lot coming into the store, there, there's guys that all they do is bow hunt, you know, and they don't they don't need uh, a range finder that, that hits a thousand. No, so, they don't. You know, you'll get it into that 600, 800 range, 750, and and truthfully, when we're talking about those distances, you can cut those in half when we're talking about deer, yep. or big game animals. Um, those those uh those distances they need a huge reflective surface. So if it says a thousand, you can cut it down to about five hundred yards. Right. We've talked about that yeah. before. At a thousand, it needs to be a three story building kind of yep. reflective surface. Yep. So cut those numbers in half. So what they've come out with is the eight fifty series. And it's gonna be under the two hundred dollar price tag. And for the quality of, of, of what they produce at that price is gonna be phenomenal. With and, their guarantee? And the guarantee is the same, the warranty is the same. 100% can't, can't lifetime unconditional warranty. And that is on the electronics as well. So uh, that puts them back in there with, with all the other series that come into that 150 to $200 right. price range. That that entry level. Yep. You know, and you're, truthfully, really, the bow hunter is not looking anything less than 100 yards. Right, right. So, you know, anything more than that, you know, uh, if you're exclusively a, a bow hunter, then, you yeah, know. Yeah, got one right in the price range. For yep. You. So that's I think that's going to be a game changer for Vortex uh, in that price range. Uh, and, and like I said, they come out with that Fury, the Fury uh, range finder, range finding binoculars. Uh, you know, those come in at eleven ninety nine ninety nine, twelve hundred bucks. 
you know, so it, it's it's binoculars and a range finder. Range finder. And, and those come with uh, the the high density glass that puts you in the range between the vipers and the razors. Oh, okay. So you know you're getting high quality glass. You're getting a range finder that reaches out there. I can't remember the exact distance that it ranges at, but it, I, I want to say it's 1,100 yards. Okay. So once again, cut that in half for big game. You know, roughly. So and and so these are out in stores now. Yes. Oh, okay. the, the 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 regular range finder, the 850 series, is not in the Cabela's yet that I was at yesterday. Okay. We're supposed to be hitting the stores anytime. All right, so, so luckily it sounds like it'll be just there before the Michigan Deer opener. Yeah, hoping so. You know, anybody I was looking that, for them, but they weren't in yet. Anybody else that's opening October 1st, sounds like it'll be in the Cabela soon. Hopefully, hopefully. That'll but, be uh, awesome. But I got something new in my hands this week. It actually came in Friday. Speaking of binoculars, um, you know, I've had these for three seasons, four seasons now. Vortex Viper 10 by 42s with HD glass. And I absolutely love these. Um but I've had the opportunity to be able to step up uh, and, and get into the Razor series. want something that's going to be uh, a, even a little better at light gathering capability at first and last light. And these are the Razor 10 by 42s that I just picked up. So um, you and I, we're, we're talking about this uh, right before the show. When you feel them, it's like, eh, this might be a little heavier. But we check the weights on them, uh, the specs on them. The the razors are actually only 0.2 ounces heavier. Right, exactly. And that that uh, so we we started monkeying with it a little bit, and we kind of figured out uh, because of the better glass mm-hmm. and the weight distribution of that better glass, they for, seem to be front loaded. Yes. So the heavier glass, you know, the glass being heavier or better glass being up in the front makes them feel just right. a touch heavier, you know. But uh, I tell you what, every time I look through them. Uh, at the store, and now that I got a pair, they're just simply phenomenal. I, I'm, it's like a kid in a candy store, man. I cannot wait to get in the field with those. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's my new toy. And Good. I got, I got a couple of Vortex. Uh, you got a rifle scope. Or rifle two. scopes, yeah. I got a crossfire for uh, my 1022 that I won at uh, the banquet last year. Oh, the banquet for kids? Yeah, so I got uh, an illuminated crosshair rifle scope for that gun and my daughter's 270 that we got her last year, the Browning. Right. Um, I bought a a four by twelve, forty-four millimeter optic for for that uh, oh, dim- so you went Diamondback four series. Four by twelve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Something that's uh, that you know four power. It's still something in front of you, pretty close. You're still gonna be able to see it. Yeah. You don't you get know, off fur. Yeah. You don't just see a big fur spot. So um, yeah, that's what I went with four by twelve. Cool. So yeah, we'll see how that does for. Her. But uh, yeah, so I got some new Vortex stuff in in the building, excellent, excellent. in the cabin, so to speak. That's sweet. Gotta so, like that. But yeah, man, the, the, the stories, it was, it was just, it, it was dead. Uh, I think a combination, everybody's trying to finish up their, their fall stuff. Well, mm-hmm. I, I'm assuming probably uh, the cider mills were probably a big hit on Saturday. Probably were, yeah. Yeah, you're going to start seeing corn mazes and all that kind of stuff. All that October stuff all starting that, to pop. Yep, exactly. And, you know, it's, it's it was just beautiful uh, to go into a store. Uh, that's, you know, that was one thing at Woods and Water. Everybody had their dogs, walking their dogs, just mm-hmm. out generally just outside right right you know so that was kind of cool yeah that, see. that was the thing i enjoyed uh just driving down back and forth with the window down you know right uh, won't be doing I was on that the in three months right even though i was on the freeway driving but it, it was just it was nice having that cool breeze blowing you know getting up in the mornings um i've worked some odd shifts this week and been up early and got out and yeah this cool weather man it's just, it's really got me itching right now to, to start shooting more archery get on my bike more um now that i've got some of the stuff from work, our summer events over with. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's I'm, right. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty much done now, and now it's I've got three weeks to shine and get ready for archery season. Um, my first trip in the woods will probably be the first falls on a Sunday. Yes. So it'll be that following weekend before I I get up. Oh, I'll, we'll be okay. Yep. And then yeah, the following week, and I'm out. So so you're shooting an archery tournament this week. No, this week, uh, two weeks, we're shooting the archery tournament. Well, you and I are, but aren't you doing an archery shoot this week? Oh, I might be. Oh, yes. I might be doing a 3D shoot uh, come Wednesday. Okay, so Wednesday you, you got an archery shoot coming up, and then not this week, but the following weekend, you and I are, are doing one with uh, some other uh, co-op leadership uh, habitat type stuff. Yep. Uh, they're putting on uh, an event that we're going to be at as well And then for the that. weekend after that, which will be the last weekend in September, puts us at Cabela's on Saturday. Yeah, in Chesterfield. Yep, absolutely. So, so if you're planning to be out and about, come on down to Chesterfield. Come and, come and join us. We'll be there talking uh, bows and scouting cameras and whatever else we can get our... Speaking of cameras, before we go, I, I, I ran into a problem, and... 
I've got to I've got to get some, and I looked for them this weekend. I couldn't find them. Pick and stick. I need some pick and stick um, stands. Oh, yeah. To put cameras on because there was there's about four places I wanted to put a camera, and it was near the food plots. You got no trees by the food plots. And well, by the places I wanted them, there was no food plots. I was cruising, getting ready to cut in a shooting lane on a tree. I had my little pole saw. I mean, I got it in the Jeep, and I'd already hung stands. And I'm cruising back to this stand on the two track. And as I'm boogieing along, you know, there's something that catches your eye. And you just, right. you're just like, what was that? You hit the brakes, kind of look, and back up nice and slow. You know, and I see this buck in the field. I'm like, yeah, he looks pretty decent. So I pull the glasses up, and I'm looking. I'm like, okay. I, and he, I could see the side of his head. He was sideways. I said he's he might be a two and a half year old, but I could see six. I could see three antlers, you know. And I'm like, okay, so he's probably mainframe six. All of a sudden, he turned and started to walk away from me. He wasn't alarmed or anything. He didn't even know I was there. He was just doing his thing, and you know, he's kind of feeding through. And all of a sudden, he lifted that head up just at the edge of the ears. Oh, I mean, okay. Just at the edge, you kind know, of like that. Yeah, kind of like that. Yep. And he wouldn't. He would. He, he was probably taller than this buck. He was probably actually he was taller than either one of these bucks. Um, but. I'm watching him, and I'm like, yeah, the body's, he's probably a year and a half, maybe two and a half year old buck, you know, and he's still in velvet. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's that behind him? And I'm looking, and all of a sudden, I seen the head pop up, and then I seen the outline of the body, and he was another 50 to 75 yards behind him. Okay. He was a bigger deer. Really? And I'm like, okay, he's two and a half, three and a half year old buck. Problem was, I mean, he was 12, 14 inches tall. Right. Problem was, he was a fork horn. That's wild. I, I just, I was blown away. I was just like... And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I kept looking. I'm like, there's nothing. To, and he turns sideways, and he looks straight. He's a fork horn, <laughs> you know, but he's unrealistically tall, Ooh, you know. Ball. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, going back to the meeting we had Saturday, talking about nutrition, talking about nutrition and genetics. Yeah, it, maybe not so much genetics. I think it's just nutrition. We just don't have, you know, that area up there, there's just not a lot left on the ground. Right, and in, in, in that area, mm -hmm. are you allowed to, to make... Mineral licks? No, uh, no. Okay. It's yeah. You know, we we talk a lot about you know, is a mineral lick is that baiting? You know, no, you can't put any supplement. Anything you you can put your put their nose in. You can't. It's do. that once you, even even like uh, putting out a scent wick. You know, or or you know, dough urine. If you right. hang it like in a, in a, the bottles that used to have the wicks on. Yeah. Them in a tree, you have. To, You'd have to hang him up so high the deer couldn't get into him. Technically, because if the deer can stick it, stick his nose in it or lick it, stick or lick, it's illegal. Really? That's what we've been told. So it's so the, so the, the no baiting zone. Right. It's no baiting. In, and they consider that bait. Right. Even though it's an attractant. It's an attractant where you're using minerals to get into their bodies to, yep. to promote better health. and Right, right. So. All right. But, yeah, it's, uh, but I looked at him and I was like, man. If you, he had a big body, you know, big body, just a four point. Yeah. And that's like, you know, what, what do you, I mean, you don't want to shoot him. You want to see what he's got potential of, but you, you just wonder how big he's really going to get. It'd be interesting now that you've seen him. You hope you see him this year. Hope he didn't. I'd like to know what he comes out next year. Right. Right. You Matter know. of fact, speaking of that, yours were still in velvet, right? Yes. Uh, the bucks in my backyard mm -hmm. out of the five, all but four have shed their velvet. Okay. One. And he's kind of he, he's kind of a goofy little mm -hmm. rack, three or four, three maybe. Mm -hmm. But his velvet is really tight, but it hasn't come off yet. Okay, and I find that odd. They they they, they were all losing at the same time. So I it looks take, like it's dried, but he hasn't scraped right. it off yet. And I and I, I took pictures of him. They let me walk out there to him and take pictures of him. I posted some, um, took video. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this guy is just not losing his velvet. Interesting. So, yeah. So. Uh, we'll have to see what we can do to get you some sticking picks. Yeah, yeah. We I need to get some of them out in the field just so I can put them where I want. Because I want to, I know where they entered. I, I kind of think I know where they entered and exited that field. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of them fields that we had the the rye slash mammoth red clover plant. Oh, yeah, yeah. The rye we never cut and mowed, and it's it's it looks nasty. But man, the clover, you know, the clover's this deep below it. So they just worked their way through it. To get they, the yeah, and now they're using it for bedding as right. well. So. It's uh, he was just out there chilling, hanging, you know. And I thought, man, I need a, I need a, need a, I can't couple cameras on that field, but there's no trees around it, right? So, so, all right, cool. But, uh, um, oh, Andy asked you, where is the archery shoot uh, Wednesday? Here on point. There you go. Here on point. So. I do believe. Yes. All right. Um, I said we were going to mention something this week, and I might get on my soapbox. We're running out of time. We can always have a soapbox next week. We can have a soapbox next week because we won't just forget it. Man, there's just something that's just been bugging me. It's, I know it's just it's been irritating. It's been building. Well, it's it, it's dividing it's dividing 
hunting people into 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 sides. Right. And I don't like it. I just I just don't like it. So you know what? Let's save it till next week. All right. Yeah. Because if I if we don't, we're gonna do another hour. Right. <laughs> So, all right, folks, so we're going to we're gonna sign off here on the uh, the podcast. That'll do it for us this week. We'll be at Cabela's here uh, this weekend and, uh, and then two weekends after that. So make sure you stop down. If there's anything from Vortex that, you, uh, that you'd like to take a look at, come see me. Um, we'll be down there for, for Cabela's as pro staffers yep. on the 30th, working in the store, probably back in the archery section, I imagine. I would think so. So you'll be down there this weekend or no? No. No. If I am, it's a social visit. Social visit. Well, you can come down and have lunch with me. Oh, there you go. So he can buy me lunch. All right. That'll do it for us this week. As we always say, if you're on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery. Black Eagle Arrows. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Vapor Hunting Scents. Killer food plot seeds, attractants, and supplements. Cabela's. Spot shooters. Antler action. Family traditions tree stands. And badass slingshots. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.